What is up, witches and wizards, muggles and nomads? I'm Animagus, and today we are starting a brand new series that I am very excited about. Um, as evidenced in the title, you can tell that this video series is going to focus on uncovering and investigating what exactly the calamity is, why it exists, and who we think might be behind it, and just a lot more. Before we start, I do want to make it very clear that I am not the first one to really try to dive into this or delve into this by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Lynette over at Wizard PhD has done a really awesome job of discussing and theorizing and being very thoughtful when it comes to the calamity, the mysteries therein, and what exactly that looks like for us as players of Wizards Unite. Some people, mainly just me, would even call her the queen of the calamity because she knows so much about it. So if you're watching this and you haven't checked her channel out, I'll put a link in the card above to her playlist. It's very, very good. It's very entertaining and I highly, highly recommend that for you. So now that we're getting all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, I want to ask a question today. And our question today is, what is the calamity? And why does it matter? Because before we really start to get into the mystery of it all and we start to dive into potential suspects and potential uh, reasons that this has even come to light, it, it's just very important to, to ask those questions because the calamity itself is just shrouded in mystery and it's kind of convoluted and we don't really have too much of an explanation because not only are we figuring it out in real time, but even the powers that be, the Ministry of Magic, Harry Potter, Hermione, everyone that we've seen so far as an NPC or non-playable character has pretty much alluded to the fact that nobody really knows what's going on. So with that question in mind, I'm hoping to define not only what the Calamity is, but also sort of describes its origins and really dive into the history of why this is a big deal in the first place. So let's go back a few hundred years or so, about 330 years when the governing powers that be decided to institute the International Statute of Secrecy in the first place. It exists in order to hide the existence of witches and wizards from muggles who persecute them. This law was at least in part a direct outcome of the Salem Witch Trials of 1692 to 1693 in Massachusetts Colony of North America. Although many cite the delegation of wizards who went to the British monarchs William and Mary circa 1690 asking for, but failing to, get protection of the wizarding population under the Muggle Law. Now, there's a really cool uh, link that I'll actually put in the description down below that helps kind of hash a lot of this out and, and the origins of the Statute of Secrecy and what that looks like. So I'm going to kind of continue to read that and you can follow along down below by clicking that link as well if you so feel inclined to. So the International Confederations of Wizards held a summit in like 1692. That's around the time that the witch trials were going on which were uh, trying to work out the details and responsibilities for each country's wizard government. So it was decided that each Ministry of Magic would be responsible for things like magical sports in their own country, which led to the formation of the Department of Magical Games and Sports uh, in Britain, and then creatures native to that own, own land, so like a Chinese fireball would be held under the Chinese Ministry of Magic, and the Welsh Green would be the responsibility of the British Ministry of Magic, and the Thunderbird would be under the care of the Makuza or the American version of the Ministry of Magic. So you kind of get what I'm saying. So each country was tasked and put in place of each of those specific creatures, sporting events, and anything native to their land they were then responsible for. There were like 27 species of magical beasts, beings, and spirits that were supposed to be hidden from muggle knowledge. So things like the hide behind, uh, the puckwudgie, uh, hinky punks, banshees, like all those types of things, obscurial even. The statute also includes uh, guidelines for how you should dress in public as a wizard so as to not raise suspicion as to why you may be different or weird. Um, the statute essentially then resulted in creation of the Ministry of Magic in 1692. So the reason that the Makuza was founded was because there are these groups of people called scourers. That's such a weird word to say, scourer, scourer. So these people were <laughs> hunting down witches and wizards and essentially burning them at the stake or they would hold trials. And so that's sort of what was going on uh, with that. They would hold 
like mock trials where they would hand them over to the, like the Puritan judges and then be like, oh, we got to burn them because they're a witch. So the reason that the statute of secrecy has been built out and progressed so much over the years is because of these types of groups of people. So in 1750, they added a clause, clause 73, that strengthened the requirement uh, for each ministry and the responsibility for their concealment of magical creatures or face sanction from the International Confederation of Wizards. So um, here are a few highlights on things that kind of went down and uh, a little bit of, of a rundown into what was going on at the time. So Ralston Potter, a member of the Wizard Gamut, supported the institution of the statute, while the Malfoy family, big shocker, did not really support the statute of secrecy because of their relationships with Muggle aristocracy and royalty. Uh, there are a lot of things that went down that kind of separated wizards and muggles and, and just all of the things that were going on. There was a lot of drama. Um, there's a person named Carlotta Pinkstone who famously campaigned to repeal the statute and was arrested several times for breaching it and showing off uh, her, her witch prowess. There's also um, an incident in 1790 where a North American witch named Dorcas Twelve Trees made a serious breach when she confided secret information to a nomad scourer named Bartholomew Barebone, who she not only told about the existence of Makuza and the International Confederation of Wizards, but also the specific location of Ilvermorny School. Barebone then stole her wand and showed it off to the press and called for the nomad persecution of wizarding folk and just start, sort of started this whole crazy cult and trying to hunt down these witches and trying to get them basically burnt at the stake or persecuting that magical folk. If only there was someone we knew who existed in Wizarding World canon who had the last name Barebone, persecuted witches and wizards, and even headed up a society called the New Salem Philanthropic Society that posed as a solution to magic when in fact it attempted to demonize and destroy it. Oh yeah, there is that exact person in Wizarding World canon. So basically, witches and wizards realized that it was a bad idea to just walk around in public waving their wands around because they knew that essentially they were going to be ripped from their homes, tortured, and killed. I don't plan on getting into Salem witch trials or anything. Uh, if you're into researching that, then go for it. There's a whole bunch about it. You could even read a, um, a play called The Crucible, which is just... I mean, you know, you could also watch the movie. Winona Ryder was in it. It was really great stuff. The craziest part to me that took so long for them to implement was like the law or even begin taking the necessary precautions to guide people away from the wizarding schools. Like Hogwarts had been around for almost 700 years at that point. So there was a large chunk of time, like a significant chunk of time where people just knew that like hundreds of kids were going off to witch and wizard school to learn magical spells and stuff? Does that seem like a little bit weird? I mean, I assume that Hogwarts was concealed from public view no matter what, but like, that's crazy to me. The general public was just generally aware that there were tons of people for so long just going off and learning magic somewhere and then coming back and living amongst them. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy to think about, but it totally makes sense in light of the statute of secrecy because when you have that sort of, of separation or fear of the other, it sort of creates this powder keg of like paranoia and segregation. I mean, imagine treating someone differently than yourself simply because they look different or come from a different background or have different talents or have a different set of beliefs. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Anyway, I digress, let's get back into the statute of secrecy and why the calamity matters. The magical law enforcement departments around the world united and decided together that they have to hide the magical community. I mean, they're being persecuted, they're being hunted down, they're being killed sometimes, and so they want to avoid that harassment and those threats. It just makes sense. Um, I'm not sure about the logistics here and what it would look like to the rest of the world if all of a sudden people just seem to vanish entirely. Yes. It's not like your friend in elementary school that just moved away in the middle of the summer either. I mean, like, people were disappearing. Yes. No memory, no recollection, mass obliviation. That's what would take place in order to completely erase the memory of people from your mind. I mean, we're talking about 
really, really powerful magic that would be very hard to pull off. Um, here, here's an example of what it would look like, and I will cite this article down below as well. Uh, but someone had written, I was reading this article, Isaac Newton, the world's most famous alchemist, when an odd detail caught my eye. It says, Principe notes that Newton suffered a mental breakdown a year after Boyle's death in 1691 and wonders if that episode might have been brought on by mercury poisoning. But Newman thinks that Newton's breakdown is just as likely to be related to Locke's trying to set him up with a well-to-do widow. So Newton's alchemy partner mysteriously dies and he has a nervous breakdown. Sounds understandable enough if he thought now he'd never be able to make a philosopher's stone and join the ranks of Nicholas Flamel and, well, Nicholas Flamel, but the timing leaves some interesting possibilities for the Potterverse. Consider... The Statute of Secrecy was apparently drafted or maybe signed in 1689 and put into effect in 1692, the year Newton had his breakdown. So Sir Isaac Newton wasn't just like the father of modern science. He was a well-known alchemist until the death of his partner in their studies together died. Now, a lot of what alchemy now is kind of being discovered is different from the way that it was back then. But when you think about the context here, what if his partner, Boyle, foresaw all of the problems that this was causing, that poten potentially the magical work that he and Isaac Newton were actually doing together, Isaac Newton, of course, being a muggle, was going to really cause some stress and tension in their area. I mean, what if people just started turning stuff into gold or started living forever all of a sudden? That'd be a big problem. So what the author of this article, which again, I said is linked below, is getting at is what it would look like if magic altered reality in such a way that witches and wizards just straight up vanished. I mean, like, I know it's not a perfect example, but it certainly seems to line up with the way that we've seen things be fixed before in the wizarding world. I mean, in Fantastic Beasts, the Thunderbird creates a storm large enough to obliviate the entire city of New York. Don't even get me started on those loopholes. But with those things in mind, you can only imagine the incredible amount of work and timing and sheer power that it would take to pull this thing off. I mean, hiding an entire world full of witches and wizards sounds exhausting, especially when a good portion of those witches and wizards don't want to hide and they don't want to be tucked away somewhere where they can't be found. The magic is insanely powerful, perhaps more powerful than anything we've ever heard of. And the scary part is the calamity is undoing it all. The Calamity is such a huge deal because it is attempting to tear down everything that the Statute of Secrecy worked so hard to stand for and all the magic put into concealing the Wizarding World. So here's a list of bad guys in Harry Potter just for comparison. Grindelwald, Voldemort, Death Eaters. Okay, so those are, those are some of like the main antagonists in the story. What do they all have in common? Well, they're trying to rebel against the laws in place to propel the magical community to a higher level than muggles, to rule and oppress rather than like live alongside them in harmony. What makes the calamity so scary is that it's intangible. It doesn't have to combine or work alongside the laws or powers that be. All of those bad guys that I just mentioned, they had to rebel against people who are flesh and blood upholding those laws. The Calamity doesn't care at all. It just rips basilisks and dragons and trolls and three-headed dogs and Death Eaters straight out of time and space and throws them into the real world for those of us on the SOS task force just to deal with. The Calamity doesn't answer to anyone or anything, and it certainly eludes the laws that have been in place for over 300 years. I mean, from the beginning of the game, we're approached and told by none other than Harry Potter himself that they just don't know what's happening. They are not sure what's going on. All that they know is that we are here and we can potentially help them, and so we've got to. And I think that that's why a lot of our NPCs in the game have such a want to blame somebody. I mean, from the get-go, there was a jump on the ministry's part to try and place the blame on someone or somewhere. They want so badly to be able to point to a person and say, hey, it was your fault that this happened, because that's 
how it's been in every part of the Wizarding World canon. There's always been a face to put the bad guy on a poster or to put his face everywhere. And everybody knows exactly who that is and how to avoid them and why to stay away. But the Calamity just is faceless. It's intangible, like I said before. So that's why Grimm is considered, you know, the prime suspect, but the suspect list is so long that it's not possible to just narrow it down to one candidate. I mean, this could be a combination of a hundred different tiny things that have created a an terrible situation that really brewed the calamity up on its own. So to answer our question from forever ago, what is the calamity and why does it matter? The Calamity is a force that just seems to have limitless power and capabilities in regards to putting traces of magic that range, by the way, from docile to like downright dangerous all over the world, in sight of muggles, in sight of magical folk, and everywhere in between. This is a very, very big threat and one that we've simply never seen before. Who or what is responsible for this? I mean, like I said, people want to point fingers and something had to cause the calamity. We just don't quite know what yet. Was it someone at the ministry that was responsible for this? Or are there more sinister powers at play? I mean, we've seen corrupted uh, dark witches and ministry officials in the Halloween event. And so it leads to believe that there is definitely some part of the ministry that is involved in this. For the sake of the entire magical community, we have to get to the bottom of this. We've got a lot of work to do. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If this is your first time here and you've never watched a video on my channel before, I really do appreciate you dropping by. If you enjoy the content and you got some value from that, please make sure you leave a thumbs up down below as well as clicking that red subscribe button and ringing that notification bell so you know the next time I produce a piece of Harry Potter content. I am very interested in this topic. I mean, what is the calamity? Why does it matter? What is the history of the statute of secrecy? These are the kinds of questions that I ask myself daily. And so I wanted to sort of diatribe with you guys and talk about what that looks like. So let me know down in the comments below what your theories are, what your questions are, so we can go ahead and dive into those as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. And again, I'll see you in the next video.